bear with me, I know you're tired. Um, I'm a dreamer. Since I was a little girl, uh, I used to dream and imagine a lot of things. And thankfully, as I was growing up, dreams from flying to the moon or meeting fairies in a wonderland turned into something more substantial. We call them goals. Um, so I was thinking, what's the difference? And I made this, wait a second, it's not working. Okay, this is a cartoon. I think it's a common concept. So you have a dream. With enough motivation, you can turn that dream into a goal. But there is one thing that kind of makes a big difference between dream and goal, is that for goal, you need to have some path with some kind of user manual, which we all together call a plan. So that's what I usually had a problem with. In my life, since I lived in different places temporarily, I actually never had a chance to make a long-term goal, long-term plan, because I never, know, never knew where I'm going to be tomorrow. So I had to come up with a different way to get to my goals, because I couldn't stop dreaming, and I needed to get to my goals somehow. And I realized from my life that the only option for me was to invest in today to do all I'm capable of and to do what I'm passionate about. And by doing that, believe it or not, you always get to your dreams and actually get even more and stuff that you never actually expected. I'm going to tell you about my life story so far, and hopefully it will be interesting for you. Um, so I've lived around and in different countries, went to different schools with different education systems, and that definitely made a huge impact on me. I was born in Baku, in Azeri family, uh, but we moved to Russia when I was five, to this little tiny science town called Dubna, two hours away from Moscow. You will see how that will shape me in the future. Um, we moved because my dad was assigned from Academy of Science here to the uh, nuclear research center there, also something that will change me in the future. And um, well, I was a extremely active child. I was involved in all kinds of extracurricular activities, camps, projects, school, kindergarten. And it was okay while I was small and a little kid. That's how all kids are. But as, as I was growing up, that didn't change. And honestly, as I was growing up, the extracurriculars were piling up and I was getting more involved and passionate about them. And I actually was getting pretty good at all the stuff I was doing, which was very exciting for me. And I never thought why I was doing it. By the eighth grade, I already attended ballet school, school of arts, graduated from music school, and was performing and participating in all competition and contests possible all around Russia and uh, around the town I was living. And well, I never actually thought that that was the time coming, so I need to kind of narrow myself and think about what I'm going to do professionally or what, what is my main interest. My main interest was everything. I wanted to try everything. I wanted to do everything. I wanted to be good at everything. That's all I was thinking about it. Something changed. And it changed um, around eighth grade. I decided to switch to school. I decided to go to the school which was popular with its insane workload and schedule it was physics and math oriented school, which was weird because I, I was never a science kid. I was good at math, but science wasn't one, just thing I was passionate about. I switched because it's sounded like a fun thing to do. It was a challenge I wanted because everything was going too smoothly and too nice. So I changed. It was a torture. Sleepless nights, um, Olympiads, physics, math Olympiads. Sometimes I didn't realize why I was doing it. But during that time, I actually kind of opened my eyes and I realized, well, I grew up in a family with a physicist. My dad was a physicist. And people who were coming to our house were mainly physicists. My dad's friends were. And the town itself, Dubna, was kind of immersed in science. You could just walk around the street and see, see its names after, I don't know, uh, last century great minds of Russia and Soviet Union. And every third building was somehow related to education and physics and nuclear research. So that's when I realized that physics changed from just one of a challenging subjects for me to something I was passionate about. Well, another thing I was passionate about. And it, it was something that I realized I could do professionally because it was very clo close to my philosophy. It was all about dreams, believing in yourself, believing in your dream, and making it real as a scientist in this case. And also it was challenging enough that I, I, was, I was sure that I will never get bored of it. 
so yeah, I was, I was calm. By the 10th grade, I was, phew, I know what I want to do. Um, I just needed to pick a university. I was in Russia, so I was, my grades were great, so I was thinking Moscow State. Sounded like a good option. Physics faculty was pretty good. I was preparing for exam. Everything was going pretty smoothly. But of course, end of 10th grade, I get a call from my dad. And he asks, hey, do you want to study in English school? I knew something was coming after that. that. That wasn't just it. And it did in Pakistan. Well, let's face it. When you're 16, you live in Russia. And all you hear from, about Pakistan is either nothing or that bad things are happening there. Let's say I wasn't very excited about the idea. I totally freaked out. But I remember before flying off to Islamabad, I was actually excited about the idea. So I was thinking, what changed, what happened, why I changed my mind. And I realized that was another situation when I decided, well, everything was going really smoothly and nicely in my life. So why don't I just dive into something I don't know and try something new? Because I didn't have to go, but I decided to go. And I never regret it. It was a great experience. It was amazing two years of my life. I enjoyed it. It was a very interesting cultural experience. I graduated from British System School. I got my A-level certificate. But then again, there was it again. What do I do now? Because now it got even more complicated. I didn't know what to do. Do, do I stay in Pakistan? Do I go back to Azerbaijan? Do I go back to Russia? It, it was just, it, I definitely did not think this through. There wasn't, there wasn't a plan or anything like that. So, well, while parents were freaking out, friends were trying to help, I was thinking, well, I am a dreamer, right? Why don't I just reach for the stars and apply somewhere really cool and maybe someone will take me? Well, parents t took it really in the way that the idea was unrealistic. How do you get into those places? How do you pay for those places? How do you let the only child and a girl, as a girl, alone somewhere? It was just a crazy idea. Well, why they were freaking out, I was already applying. And, uh, well, it happened. It, ironically, I don't know, surprisingly, I don't know why, but it happened. And then I was thinking why it happened. And it, that was the reason. Those things I've done, the, the ballet school singing and dancing and all other stuff that I've never thought why I was doing them, that was actually the reason. That, that's something that set me apart, apparently, from the crowd. I was really excited, and it, the idea was getting real as acceptances from Oxford, MIT, Harvard were coming. Parents gave in at that moment. They were like, fine, now it's up to you. Just make your choice. Choice was easy, because I wanted to be as involved in sciences as I could be in arts. And also, U.S. education was kind of implied a freedom, which I always needed as a person. So yeah, Harvard was a perfect choice. Still is. Um, currently, I'm a third-year student at Harvard University, uh, pursuing my bachelor's degree. I'm double majoring in physics and astrophysics. Weird, I know. Um, <laughs> but I have to tell you, it's, it's awesome. I never regret it. Yes, again, sleepless nights, all that. But who doesn't have those, right? And as long as you believe in what you do, and as long as you're passionate about what you do, it doesn't matter what people say. Why do you do it? You're a girl. Like, no one will ever marry you. And like, so, 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 it's, it, it, it's crazy. So I don't know about the last one. Let's see how that turns out. But I'm, I'm sure that it wasn't as crazy as people think. It, it does make sense for me. I love what I do, and I'm hopefully um, I'm going to make it something bigger than it is now. I want to tell you about the last dream I'm trying to fulfill, hopefully in three days. Um, that's where I'm going to be working, in three days. This is CERN. It is located on the, Swiss, uh, on the border of Switzerland and France. <laughs> Thanks. Um, this is a place I wanted to see since I was 10. Dad was talking about it all the time, even before LHC was built, which is a large, a large hadron collider. Hopefully you heard about it. This is the biggest, you see the, the circular thing? This is the biggest experiment in the history of humanity. This particle accelerator is 28 kilometers long, and we accelerate subatomic particles, for example, protons, hydrogen, nuclei, with speeds really, really close to speed of light. And we smash them inside of detectors. This is the detector that I'm going to be working on. Oh, pardon? That's where I'm going to be working on. That's where... Atlas is situated. This is a um, uh, it's, it's huge detector. You can see how huge it is, but compared to the little people next to it at the bottom. Um, we smash, for example, protons. In Atlas, we smash protons inside of this detector, and we, we make conditions that we believe were present in the beginning of the universe, in actual like, first billionth of a second, which was present 13.7 billion years ago. And I, I'm so fascinated and excited about this because I, I could never imagine when I was like 
smaller probably, that people can actually do that. And the, the fact that people can do that, it, ma it makes me hopeful for what we can actually do in the future. So it obviously doesn't stop there. Um, I still have dreams, goals. I have motivation enough to, uh, to get to my goals, and hopefully even the, some crazy change that come up again, I will, I will deal with it. I have a lot of goals and dreams right now. I wanted to do PhD in physics and become a real scientist and do cool things. Make a difference somehow, I don't know, make myself proud, which usually make your parents proud, your nation proud, your people proud. So it's all connected. So what I wanted to tell you is um, dreams, having dreams and having ideas is probably one of the best thing a person can do because you can always spot a person from the crowd by knowing does she or he have an idea. You can always see the glow of passion. And if you have this glow of passion, you'll always have thirst for life. And you'll never get bored of living. And I think that's important, especially for young, for young people. And believe me, the world is big and beautiful and amazing. There's so many opportunities. So we should just go out there with our dreams and try to realize them and believe in ourselves. Thank you. Just <laughs> on.